Yo, what's going on Dragon Ballers? Welcome back to another gameplay video. Today we have myself on the bottom side of the screen playing my AOD build. On the top we have my Patreon James playing Frieza Prison. So two of the new anniversary box decks going at it for you guys today. My AOD list is currently on the Patreon. If you want to check that out in the description, helps the channel out a lot guys and you get a lot of really strong content in terms of getting your competitive play up there so guys i'm going first getting my boo on the board that's absolutely what you want every single turn one i play four bo uh, four bobbities and four of the hatch yak that fetches the bobbity from the deck so we're getting over to freeze the prisons turn one here guys if you are new make sure to subscribe hit that bell so never miss an awesome dragon ball super video like this and there are tons of ways in the description to help the channel out if you would like to do that definitely check it out down there all right freeze the prison getting started with the tur turn one charge not a lot of early plays in the Frieza Prison deck by any means. Oftentimes, you'll keep your energy up for either a, you know, counterattack, usually like After Image or Wolf Fang Fist, things like that. Luckily, Wolf Fang Fist only hits the attacking battle card, only minus 15 the attacking battle card. So my Bobbity is safe for now. There are a lot of cards in red that can deal with the Bobbity, so that can be problematic. However, um, safe for the time being. So we're going to this in first. I did just see they had the Wolf Fang Fist, so... Even if he chooses to use it here, I'll still get a card off the top of my deck, and I do want to make use of my energy, start filtering through my deck. So we'll see what I get off the top five here. Takes me a second to remember how to use top five in this thing. So we're getting the Garlic Negate, one of the best cards in the deck by far. We'll just produce another tier list, if, as, you know, assuming we have another one of our four copies in the deck. We're adding Slug to our hand. Looks like we're passing turn. Prison up here. Playing the Irate Emperor, now what's interesting is James doesn't actually play the 8-drop boss card in the deck. He just plays a 7-drop because it is a 5-drop 25k at the worst, but its combo effect's actually quite good. When you combo with it, I believe you can minus something by 10k as long as you have two mono-red battle cards in your drop area. So just another, another value combo card. You know, people say it sucks that Prison doesn't have a super combo, and while it is unfortunate, I mean, the deck is just so good at playing defense. Uh, if it had a free super combo... That could be one of the things that pushed it over the top. I think you do need to make a deck like Prison actually use its energy. Uh, so there is some way to play around it. But regardless, we're going on. I'm on turn three. We are searching. We're adding the Vegeta AOD Unison. So turn three, turn four is where I generally like to awaken. I wouldn't mind awakening here, but I don't have the means to do so because I'm at seven life. He hasn't really been attacking me. We played a few games and sometimes James attacked me. Sometimes he didn't. So, usually, more often than not, I won't take life with Bobbity, and that just allows me to continue to gain card advantage over time, so this way when I do flip, I have a healthy hand size. And you really don't need to charge um, until you get to, you could stop charging is what I mean to say, once you get to 5 energy, because I play the Boo Seeker in this deck, so I'll stop charging at 5, and then if I do draw into the Boo Seeker Rare, I'll charge my 6 and then play it generally. But look here how, just how crazy big James hand size is here with the prison deck. It's actually a little bit ridiculous if you ask me. So we're charging a copy of Bobbity here. We do have all blue energy. This is a blue green variant of the deck and there actually is more green in the deck than blue. So kind of interesting that we ended up charging so much blue. You don't really need any green energy in the deck. It just so happens that most of the cards in the deck are green, but I could have hard casted Vegeta AOD the unison if I had the appropriate energy to do so, but now I have to wait till I get flipped. Now I'm starting to take life with Bobbity because I, I generally just don't mind having, uh, starting to take life and get awakened here now that I'm at like four energy. And I definitely made a misplay there by attacking with the slug. I knew we had the Wolf Fang Fist in hand. I really just wanted to get that frost off the board because it generates him so much value, but maybe attacking my super combo wasn't the best idea. I did force him to use a Wolf Fang Fist, however, but looks like he's gonna add another one off the top with his leader. Now he'll look at the top four with the frost unison itself. And he'll get another live to fight another day. Now this card is, of course, absurdly powerful. I mean, stopping your opponent playing 20Ks for their entire turn is generally pretty devastating. But uh, I do have ways to play cards on his turn, which makes that not quite as bad. Add that to the fact that I can potentially play a unison. That's uh, that's definitely pretty good. So I am going to garlic here. I am going to play the Turlis, so essentially playing around that Live to Fight because Live to Fight only affects me on my turn, I do get some pretty good value out of uh, him attacking there. I am at 6, I would actually like to awaken this turn, but doesn't seem like that's going to be in the cards. So he's going to Wolf Fang, the Turlis, I do still get the search. 
Luckily, that's that's pretty good for me in terms of card advantage, although he is kind of just towering me right now in card advantage. So we're going, we're going Garlic into the Frost to Unison. He's going to use the King Vegeta Final Moments to drop my Garlic by 10 and my Leader by 10. So my Leader is zero power. I know it's not doing any damage. I'm just now looking to take a life, get some card advantage back to my hand. Super combo seems pretty good here, but all the cards in the in that top five actually seem pretty good. The Broly is honestly an incredible card. I mean, when you start free playing the Broly on your leader's awakened side, that's a lot of value because he helps you keep up a hand size, right? He generates 20k board, a 20k body on the board, and at the same time, you know, keeps your hand relatively healthy by that top three selective search. So he's gonna go leader here, add the Freeze of Death Ball, one of the best cards in his deck by far. I mean, it's essentially what a 25k combo on your leader, definitely quite strong. So we're playing Slug here. I just want to be able to do something with my energy before I awaken. And preventing him from playing counterplays in a Freezer Prison deck is pretty good. He doesn't, he doesn't play an abundance of counterplays by any means, but if he is playing like Exploding Weakness or a Denial of Hope, having on the board is definitely not the worst thing. So he is going to add a Denial here. He is going to once again hit me with the Lift to Fight. Going into my turn six, I'm pretty sure I can just not charge here and be fine. So we are going to go Garlic into his unison. Luckily, he's tapped out. He does have the Wolf Fang Fist, though. So we'll go another Garlic into his thing. He's going to go after Image by ripping a life. So on that, he'll lower the Slug. And I was actually very surprised when I saw that after Image said cards and not... I assumed it would say Battle Card or Leader Card, but it actually has cards. So you can actually after Image to boost your unison which is actually quite good gives that card a lot more playability so we're gonna awaken here it looks like i didn't really have anything to use my energy on which is unfortunate because he did end up using live to fight so i am gonna take a life get to four look at the top five my hand size is pretty healthy now it's kind of matching his which is nice but he has a lot more ways to add cards than i do at the moment so that is a bit unfortunate we are going to go into the vegeta unison here and it feels pretty good to get into this right now it feels like it's going to help me swing this game a little bit more into my favor. I am going to go Unison into Unison here. He could have just blocked if I swung the leader. And honestly, I really want that Unison off the board because it is uh, it is getting him way too many cards in his hand. I could have attacked his leader, but on the off chance he didn't block it, uh, he still would have had his Unison. You know, let's say maybe he had another way to defend it, which probably not because he was tapped out. But I really just want the Unison out, out, of, the, out of the way. So he's charging another Frieza 7 drop. He is on 6 energy here, so we'll see what he opts to do. He is going to use the leader to add another live to fight. Awaken, draw 2, 17 cards in hand. This is getting a little bit uh, absurd. Activate main puts him to 18 cards in hand. Another Frost. Super excited to see that, of course. He's going to add a Cabo's Awakening off of the Frost. 3 energy once again, live to fight. And Live to Fight, by the way, is totally a card that should not draw a card. For the for the crazy Floodgate effect that it has, that's definitely a card that should not draw a card. But anyways, I'm forced to take a damage here because he uses his 25k combo on my face. So we'll see what happens here. If I could really get into the boost Seeker Rare, that actually would help me out. But it looks like I'm not drawing it. It is a little unfortunate the leader can't add it. It would be really cool if it said Agent of Destruction on the card. But unfortunately, it does not. So it looks like James is going to take a life to use After Image here, protecting against my Unison Swing. He could have blocked, but looks like he didn't want to lose too many markers on the Unison. Because as long as he can minus two Frost, he can pick up some of his extra cards from the drop area. And at this point in the game, I am kind of considering playing into the Live to Fight, but I choose not to. It just, it would cost too many cards. I can't afford to fall behind. I'm kind of waiting to see what his win condition is. I'm pretty certain it's just the Freeze of Seeker at this point. The deck doesn't have too many great win cons. I mean, the uh, the 8 drop is easily answered by a card like Max Power Kamameha. So, and, and the, deck, the deck can't really afford to play Bobbity anymore because it just takes too much space in the deck. So, with that being said, I think he's just waiting to see his Freeze of Seeker rare. I do need to keep an abundance in the gates in my hand, but it's kind of hard to do so now because his leader is actually putting a lot of pressure on me with the freeze of death balls so he's just getting another frost onto the field after using the last one's minus two effect this is really really tough to beat through and we did play other games his hand size did not blow up quite like this 
So I wouldn't say expect this for every Frieza Prison matchup, but it can happen. Frost is a pretty insane card. Garlic into leader, just trying to do damage now, trying to make him waste cards. Of course, Freezer Prison does not have an abundance of 10k combos, but he has cards like Paralysis Technique, which is going to neg my whole board. That definitely hurts. Going Vegeta Unison into his leader, he's going to block it. So with that, he will lose two markers. And now he has the uh, final moments to wipe my entire board. Going to use the Broly effect from hand. You pay one, you get to add some AODs from your drop back to your hand. So I'm basically exchanging those Brolies for Garlics, which I really need an abundance of because he can freeze a Seeker Army. However, the problem is going to be if he does deal with my Bobbity, I'm going to have to pay the full two for the Garlics, and that's going to tap me out. So my Corrigan, my Beans are not going to be too great. Uh, I have to hope I can use Bean here to maybe get some more energy back up. But we'll see what James decides to attack here. All right, so we have leader going into leader. We're going to use one of the garlics. I can't really afford for him to just be attacking and dropping those trees of death balls. Looks like he's tapping two for something. Could be a denial of hope, potentially. Yep, so he's going to denial the garlic, preventing me from playing anything from the deck. Definitely a good call. And here comes the answer to Bobbity. So now I really only have Coercion to rely on. That is quite unfortunate. He probably doesn't have the energy to kill me here. So I think I'm looking okay. He's going to choose to attack with his blocker. He does have three energy up. Two energy now. Then he's going to go Loyal Kikono. Getting back a Wolf Fang Fist. So free defense added to the two energy he has available at the moment. So I'm going to combo out of this. I really don't want to go down to two life, although... Maybe I just should have, because he can't play a double strike card in his deck. He can't play Chompa or the East Kai. So maybe I should have just went down to two here, not wasted the cards. I might have been the better play. I'm not under lift to fight, so I can try to put some pressure on here. But um, luckily, I have, the, I have the answer to Topo in my hand, so I could be okay. We're going to use Hatch here to buy back the Bobbity. I do put the Hatch back in my hand. James catches that in a second. That was definitely a, a misplay on my end. Yep, Hatch goes to the drop area. So we're going plus one on Vegeta. I could use a minus five, but to be honest, I don't want to lose my Unison. And taking three random cards out of a 17-card hand seems highly low impact. So I opt not to go for that. He can't really topo me here because of the fact that I have... Android 13 in my deck. It's a card that AOD plays. So he can't really topo me here. He's going to have to do something else to stop the Vegeta Unison. He's going to use the Paralysis Technique. Luckily, I didn't have anything on the board yet. So that feels pretty good that he didn't get too much value out of it. Looks like we're thinking on free playing the Android 13 here. Looks like we're going to play the Turles for one. Try to get some value out of this. Probably going to get Wolf Fang Fisted. Yep, that's, that's that. So I'll still get the top five, so not too bad of an exchange. We get an Android 13, so he knows now that I can essentially stop the Topo. We're going to free play our other 13, the 20k crit. That's getting another Wolf Fang Fist. I am starting to chip away at his hand a little bit. But man, passing back to him with 9 energy, 10 energy, 9, ener yeah, nine, nine energy. So that's looking pretty rough. He is getting rid of my Bobbity and my Android 13. That's leader into leader. I got to start using my negates here. Unfortunately, garlic's going to cost me two. So that is looking pretty bad, especially if he has the Frieza SCR in his hand. Eight cards in deck. It's pretty likely that he has it. He's going to add a cease to exist off of frost, it seems like. Pretty good, too, because that card, you can just combo with it. So not a clunky extra card like most other extra cards. He's passing without going into the Frieza SCR. Looks like he doesn't want to play it into my open energy because he knows I have multiple gates in my hand, so that's pretty good. We're going to use the Vegeta ulti, if you will. The minus five will rip three cards out of his hand. Hitting the Wolfing Fist, definitely not bad. But we were really hoping for a win con there. We want him to not really have a win condition. So looks like we're going Vegeta AOD into leader. All right, looks like he's gonna block the Vegeta swing. We're going to use Hatch to get back Bobbity once again. 
He can answer it pretty easily. Luckily, I can continue to bring it back relatively easily. We're just going to play the Android 13 for one. I, I just want to put some type of pressure on here. I also want to get the Turlises back into my deck so that the Garlics can bring it out of the deck. He's a two life. Debating what to do here. I mean, the fact that he has six open energy, <laughs> there is absolutely no way I'm winning the game this turn. So, swinging into lead. He's going to drop Topo there. I will drop a 13 to stop it, but I'm really running myself low on energy here. Another 15k to his leader. He is going to bring in Frieza Fairweather Fiend. So if I activate a counter, he gets to minus 20, one of, uh, minus 30, one of my battle cards in Barrier. I am going to counterplay it because I don't want to deal with 20k beater, but he is going to kill my Bobbity, and that's going to hurt. Maybe I should have just let him have the... Uh, the Frieza there. I'm going to free play the Android 13. 20k crit at lead. Three cards in hand. Not looking too great for me. Combling 25k. Kono gets him to 25 as well. He gets back a Death Ball, which is going to be one of the ways he's going to be able to kill me. And he's going to use a Kaba's Awakening here. Passing back to Prison. I want to get that one last attack on the unison. I didn't attack my leader yet. Prison with 9 energy. Probably safe to say he can stop charging. But we'll see. 3 energy. Cease to exist. My garlics are now dead in my hand. Quite unfortunate. We got leader into leader. Triple Kaba's Awakening. Those are basically 10k combos. He's going he's gonna to hard cast Frieza Fairweather Fiend because he does not have a unison to play it for two. I do have another Frieza counterplay, so I can kill it, luckily. He's going to remove one of my Android 13s. I get another turn to live, surprisingly, very surprisingly. We're going to plus one on Vegeta Unison. We're going Unison to lead. I get... Stopped with the paralyzing technique. Free playing the Android 13 with crit. That's going to get stopped with the death ball. That's going to end up killing the Android 13 because it was also minus five. I really don't have a way to kill him here, so I just end up passing turn. Go tanks use in a rage. He's taking all the cards. <laughs> He's taking the garlic out of my hand. I can stop his next attack, but at this point, it's seeming pretty rough for, for me here. I think I can still die here anyway, unfortunately. So his leader is plus five, uh, plus 5k overall. That's 20k because of Gotenks using in Rage, which he did use to take a life because now he's going for game. He wants all the cards possible. Frieza at leader. I have to combo out of it. I really don't have too much of a choice. So I end up using the Garlic and the Turles for a very specific reason. I kind of predict I'm going to survive this turn unless he has another way to do damage to me here besides his, his unison. And I really want to have a way to get around the Topo here. I don't have Android 13 in my hand. So if I need the extra attacker, like if he Topos me here, for example... I want to be able to have the discard too, try and kill him. See what he does here. His leader is back at 15. I end up using the super combo though because he opts to not topo me. But here he has the extra death ball to stop my unison swing. I'm going to use the max power Kamehameha. To get rid of a secret rare, but honestly, guys, I, I don't have any cards to defend myself, so that, that bean is uh, not going to help me much here. So we're pretty much going to take this last damage to Death Ball and Loyal Kikono. So, guys, a much longer gameplay, I know. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed it. Got to see two of the anniversary box decks in action. Let me know in the comments below what you think, and I will see you next time.